So actually, as of now, there is no vaccine on the market. Mm -hmm. Uh, this has been something people have been working towards for three, four decades now, um, arguably a hundred years, but in more modern times, three or four decades. Uh, there's been issues with vaccine development. Part of the problem is that the pathology associated with chlamydia is largely based on the host's immune response. Uh, when you're infected with chlamydia, your actual immune response causes a lot of the disease. So when you look to vaccinate against chlamydia, you need to vaccinate in a way where your body can prevent the infection, but doesn't respond in a way that actually harms your body. Um, so they've been working on it a lot recently. They've discovered the specific immune response, or I think they've discovered the specific response they're looking for to protect without causing harm. Um, and now they're just looking for a way to elicit that appropriately in people. So there's a lot of vaccines in development. Um, there's one, at least one in phase one clinical trials, um, but that's sort of where they're at right now. Um, so that's, that's a difficult question to answer as one person. Um, a, based on the research we've done, based on another such study put out by the CDC, uh, vaccination would be expensive, um, for sure. Likely it would be more expensive than the cost of treating chlamydia. Um, but what you get, sort of on the flip side of that, is you get a big reduction in chlamydia morbidity and a lot of the long-term sequelae associated with that, namely infertility. Um, which is a big negative outcome associated with it. So our model specifically estimates that over a 17-year period, if you look at a cohort of um, young women starting at the age of nine going to 26, that a vaccination program might cost a net amount of about 40 million more. Um, but you avert thousands of cases of chlamydia, you avert thousands of cases of pelvic inflammatory disease and chlamydia-associated infertility. So that's sort of where the resource you know, balance comes into play, and do you decide to spend the resources to prevent that or not? Um, in a resource-rich setting, like the United States, uh, it's likely worth it. The resources are available. The question comes into play in more resource-poor settings, where it's very limited, and what you spend towards healthcare can be spent in one field or another field. That's, that's where the decision gets tricky.